What's going on boys and girls? It's been a quiet week. I did make another video on Thursday, but I got so busy, I just didn't have the time to actually put it up on the channel because so much stuff's going on in the TVs and movies. And obviously I've got my other channel, which is in the description below as well. And uh, it just, it takes so much time to just write stuff and edit and everything else. But I digress. We got Crystal Palace coming up. Big, huge game. And they're all big games. I can't remember the last time that I didn't say we had a big game on because since the turn of the year when we had 18 games left to play, every game is a cup final and Arsenal have been doing really well. We still have in the top three results over the last 10 games and this one really, <laughs> I don't even know because look, I said that the, the Aston Villa one could be a banana slip. We've overcome everything so far. I don't know how to gauge this game. Is this something where we can actually say Arsenal are the favourites for this game? Because a lot of people are saying that. A lot of people are saying, yeah, as good as Palace is, and they are very good, going up against the draw specialist, against a team that doesn't draw very many games, mind you, um, this could be a cheeky little Arsenal away win. But because I've never really gone with that narrative before, I've always taken the conservative route. And I will continue to do so until I see that there's five games left and we've stood up to the likes of Man United and Spurs. Those are the two biggest ones for me. Yes, this is a game that we could win and probably favourites too. But the big factors is the Arsenal versus Chelsea and the Arsenal versus Spurs. And right now, Spurs and Chelsea's form is not great. Now, Chelsea have just had a horrible game today where they've lost 4-1 to Brentford. Now, I have no idea. That is at Stamford Bridge, by the way, guys. So I know a lot of you thought when the Roman Abramovich thing was going on that that was going to affect him in some way. And for some reason, they got through it. And they got through it with flying colours. But I believe this is the aftermath now. So all of it has sunken in. Manager doesn't understand whether there's stability in the team. Players don't know whether they're going to be re-signed. All this thing has, looks like it started to come to a pass because that scoreline, 4-1 to Brentford, has just killed them. It does mean, however, if Arsenal do beat Palace, that we are two points behind Chelsea, which is kind of back where we was before we lost to Liverpool last week. So um, for me, guys, Palace, very tough team, very well managed. I know that there's some stuff with Kurute and there's some stuff we're going on with Zaha in terms of injuries, but don't listen to any of that, guys. Just prepare for the worst. Just prepare for the fact that they're going to turn up. Because they've got quality players, again, Ayu, Gallagher, they've got quality players all across the board. So it doesn't really matter to us whether, you know, he's there or not. Zaha used to be their talisman. This season, they're now a team squad. They're no longer dependent on one guy turning up and producing magic. They are playing a whole team game now, and that's thanks to Patrick Vieira. So there's a lot of things now for us to be concerned about and worry about. So it really doesn't matter to me whether he's going to be there or not. For Arsenal, it's kind. It's not business per usual, as I normally say with the team shit every week. I know Bukayo Saka had the COVID case, but he's back in practice now. Mikel Arteta is saying that he's training regularly and he's looking well. So I expect Bukayo Saka to play on Monday night. Tomiyatsu, not, not sure. Look, man, it's been four months now. It's been four months. So, like I said, man, that's a long-term injury. Something that we never even thought about. So, my brother has to take as much time as he needs. On the flip side of that, one of you guys in the forum showed these statistics with Cedric Soares and Tomiyatsu. And actually, out of five of the main statistics, Soares tops out Tomiyatsu. It seems to have a good replacement. I know he's taller better on set pieces and things like that. But in terms of ball possession and moving the ball forward, Cedric Soares has actually been a better and a more adapt player. So listen, long mate continue. And that's what happens when a player starts to get an, uh, a number of games underneath him. Your form just starts to escalate. So listen, good on him. And I've always been an advocate for the player anyway. So I'm not just shouting him out. Uh, we actually have the stats to back it up. So well done, Cedric Soares. Well, he would step in. And for Aaron Ramsdale, I'm not sure whether he's going to be able to make this weekend. It's probably going to be 
a situation where Bert Leonard's going to step in. And he's an adapt player as well. The quality and drop-off is not going to be that much. And as in the last game that you saw against Villa, he's just an outstanding performer. He's a great shot stopper, always will be. And uh, like I said in that game, I even saw his distribution start to look a little bit more tidy. So you've got a quality player there who's going to come in in Bert Leonard to provide a team with a lot of stability between the posts. So for me, it's going to be him in goal. It's going to be Tierney, Ben White. It's going to be Gabriel, Cedric Soares. They make up the back four. Party and Zaka as your bookends in the midfield. And then you're going to have Odegaard. You're going to have Saka. And you're going to have Lacazette. And possibly Martinelli. I don't know whether they're going to play Smith Rowe. I really am not sure what they're going to do. But I would expect it to be Martinelli. But because they're both fit now. So really you can pick between the two who you want. I think you're getting better defensive output from Martinelli. But you're getting a better offensive output from Smith Rowe. So you can sort of choose between the two. The fact that it's going to be away from home. I would go with Smith Rowe. That's just my opinion. But again it depends on whether he's fully recovered from his injury. I know they've been pampering him in cotton wool. And only giving him a time as a bit part player but Martinelli is the more robust player and he's been the guy who's featuring more of late so it really depends on how the manager wants to go tactically Arsenal it don't really matter because Arsenal's been as good away from home as they have been at home tactically they've been going at teams um, they've been blocking up the passing lanes and making it very uncomfortable to, to, for teams to get into their passing route and get comfortable on the ball, the pressing. Uh, it's really good from Arsenal right now. And, and that's the reason why after the Villa game, Steven Gerrard just said, look, man, although we've been playing well this season, they're just a better team than us. Arsenal just came out and dominated the game. There's going to be a level of what is Patrick Vieira going to do to actually stop Mikel Arteta from stopping Palace playing? You know, are they going to be moving the ball quicker? Are they going to be faster in transition? I haven't seen a lot that stops Arsenal playing these days. I really haven't. And the Arsenal that played Palace before Christmas is a different kind of animal right now. They're not the same Arsenal that went down 2-1 at home to Crystal Palace. This is a different team right now. This is a well-oiled drill Arsenal team that are just adapt at doing everything, at defending, uh, set pieces, uh, creativity. The only thing that would really improve for Arsenal moving forward now is for Lacazette to get on the score sheet. Which again, Lacazette scored in the other fixture at the Emirates against Crystal Palace. So wouldn't it be fitting and wouldn't it be nice for him to get on the score sheet again? Please, get on the score sheet. Make it easier for us. Let's get some output from that position. But for me guys, I'm going to go with an Arsenal 1-0 away win. That's all we need. And that would put us in good might for us to put the challenge. We've got two winnable games after that. We've got Brighton at home. Brighton haven't been playing very well lately. And then we've got Southampton away. And they can be a very mixed bag. But I think it's winnable if you're Arsenal. And um, I think that that would be a lock for us. Moving into... It would be seven games left to play after the Southampton game. And the clock would be ticking on top four. So... Really, really good, uh, but I can't wait to see what happens on Monday night. I'm going to be there with you guys doing the live stream, so I'll see you guys then, man. And let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. What would your predictions be? Nice one, guys. Speak to you in the next one. Peace out.